Hello and welcome to Aquaphyto, another video to show you how to culture phytoplankton. Phytoplankton is used for feeding rotifers, reef tanks, corals, feather dusters, you name it, it has endless uses in the marine environment. The reason why we're going to show you how to culture it today is especially for fish breeders who use things like rotifers and copods to feed their small fry or more extreme fish lines like the mandarin or the scooter blenny will only eat copods, copods main food being phytoplankton. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a culture purchased from Aquaphyto of phytoplankton. Now the first thing you'll notice about this is the colour and density of the culture. It's extremely thick, you can't see through it and it looks healthy. It hasn't got stuff floating in it, it doesn't smell and basically that is what you want. Now the culture is important because this is where all your supplies of phytoplankton are going to stem from. What you're also going to need is a vessel for running your culture in. Now cross-contamination is a really big problem in phytoplankton. It causes a lot of people's cultures to crash. Now when I say crash, you'll come down one morning and you'll have a line of five cultures and one of them will be turning yellow. This is bad. This means the culture's crashed. If you catch it early, by feeding it, and I'll show you how to do that later, with some fertilizer, you can bring it back, but what you'll notice is you will get a scum around the top of the vessel that you're using to culture, and what you should do is take it out, filter it, and then restart the culture. But anyway, let's get on with making a culture. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use one of these. And these are standard, and these are mainly used for brewing. This glass vessel, it contains 4.5 pints and it is absolutely perfect as long as you sterilize it first. Once you've got your sterilized container, we're gonna add our culture. Bear with me just one second. Now the first thing you're going to notice is as a percentage there doesn't seem to be a lot of phytoplankton in there. Now this is the standard amount I use which is one litre. The reason I use this is because I tend to leave my cultures to mature for 10 days. You get a better quality of phytoplankton and you can split more out of one container. What we're going to do now is add our salt water. This is salt water. Now the salinity in this is about 1.9 to 2, which I use on all my phytoplankton. The water itself comprises of Red Sea Pro Coral Salt and zero TDS water. Now sometimes in your tank you can get away with a TDS of 2, 3 before you really see an adverse effects. It has to be zero TDS water when you're culturing phytoplankton because any foreign elements in the water will kill your culture. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to top off this culture. It takes a bit of time and I usually get soaked. There you go. Gonna do it. Now your culture is ready. So what we're gonna do 
and wipe down the side quickly. And we're going to add fertilizer. Now this is an F2 fertilizer. The reason we use an F2 fertilizer is because it's reef safe and it has been designed and made to go in the reef tank environment. The reason why we do not use Baby Bio or Miracle Grow, even though it's about 40 times cheaper than F2 fertilizer, is because most plant foods contain copper, which is deadly in your tank. Now, using it in phytoplankton, the phytoplankton will consume all the copper. The copper will then be consumed by all your fry foods and consumed by all your fry. It will also be consumed by all of your corals in your tank and slowly they will start to die. So copper is a big no-no. Now be careful where you buy F2 from. Sometimes you get it in a watered down state and it is an extremely expensive purchase. I think one litre costs around about 30 pounds. Now for a jug this size, I usually use about two millilitres. So all you do, using a syringe so you get a correct balance, is squirt your two millilitres straight in. Now you have a fully fertilised culture, which is ready for your airline. Now the reason why we use airlines and not bubbles is because the bubbles act as a skimmer, acts in the fish tank. In other words, as the bubbles come up from your airstone, they will cling to all of the cells of phytoplankton, take them up to the surface and kill them. So we use a bubbler, which is just a piece of rigid airline. Now you simply connect this to a airline, pop it in the top of the tank, or pop it in the top of the bowl, sorry. And that's it. Last thing to do is cap your bottle off. Now, with a bottle like this, there's a chance that it's going to get contaminations from airborne contaminants such as dust, pollen, um, fungus spores. So what you're best to do is cap the bottle off. Unfortunately, you've got to leave the bottle open for air to get in and air to get out. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a stopper. And this is a simple way, and it's cost effective. Buy a pack of these cheap sponges, rip the green off, Take a pair of scissors and cut a large square. Now you can cut a circle if you like, but I find it time consuming. And plus I never got it right and it ends up all dropping in the bottle. What you do now is you place the sponge in the top of the bottle like so. Now, how would you get your airline for it? That's easy. Airline goes in, pop the sponge in the top of the bottle, and there you have it. And that is how to capture phytoplankton. Thanks for watching, and best of luck.